In this video, we're going to see how to take an existing Spring Boot project that uses Kafka and deploy it on Azure to use Event Hub. The goal of this video series is to have multiple applications that work together by using Event Hub. For example, you see that here we have a dashboard. Take a look at the URL and you'll notice that this is in a unique space, essentially a unique Tomcat instance. Now let's take a look at our My Plant Diary application. So dashboard is something an administrator would use, the application is something that a user would use. Once again, take a look at the URL and you'll notice that this is in a unique location. Now I have this set up so that when I hit submit, it's going to add a message to an event hub, which is shared by both of these separate applications. I go ahead and I hit submit. And with that submitted, let's go back and look at our dashboard. Note that our dashboard now has two items that it's showing, and it retrieved these items from our event hub. There is a bit of a lag, so it won't show up immediately, but in just a few minutes, we'll see that we'll have another kind of bump like we have here. These are some from when I trialed it earlier. We'll get another little bump here with a few more items added to the topic, and that's essentially how our two applications can talk to each other. This video is focused on taking one application that runs on Kafka and Tomcat locally, and converting it so that it can run on Azure and Event Hub on Azure. We're just going to worry about one application here, which is Plant Diary, and getting that set up. In a video that follows, I'm going to show how to actually deploy three different applications that all use the same Event Hub registry. So a quick overview of what they are. Plant Diary is going to add a, a message to this photo in topic, or Event Hub if you want, or Event. And then Photo Processor will read those, and theoretically it will resize the image. I'm going to disable that for Azure, just because that would require file storage that I'm not going to configure just yet. Photo Processor will resize the image, and if it's successful, it puts it on Photo Out. If something goes wrong, it puts it on Photo Exception. Now you notice that there's a dashboard application that is listening to all of these events. And it will say if something is in Photo In, but no other event, that it has not yet been processed. If it's in both photo in and photo out, that means it was processed successfully. If it's in photo in and photo exception, that means processing started, but something went wrong. We're just going to concern ourselves with Plant Diary right now. The others will pick up in a future video. Here's what we need to do. First of all, understand the Azure framework. We're going to cover some topics I covered in a video called Azure Fundamentals Overview. App Service Plan, Resource Group, App Service, and our application. These things all work together, and we're going to see an example of it in this presentation. So I recommend you watch that video if you haven't done so already. I'll put a link in the comments or just go to the playlist. Also, we need to set up our Spring Boot project for Azure. I covered that in a separate video as well, deploying Spring Boot project to Azure with Azure Toolkit for IntelliJ IDEA. So in this video, we'll walk through the next two bullet points, which is creating an event hub. And in Kafka, we call it a topic. In the land of Azure, it's called an event, so I might use those terms interchangeably myself a little bit, uh, but nonetheless, same idea. Publish, subscribe. You can put something on an event hub or on a topic, and multiple software pieces can subscribe to that and be notified when something changes. One big thing that we need to do to configure our application, we need to update our application.properties. That's probably the biggest change we're going to make to our application. And for that, we need to set up our event hub first so that we can get a connection string. Some good news, though. Really good news. Can I still use Kafka template and Kafka listener? Yes, you can. So the code that you wrote, if you wrote an existing app for Kafka, a lot of that will stay the same. The annotations that you used, the Kafka listener, Kafka template, so on and so forth. All we really need to change is configuration, and that's really nice. One caveat, though, we do need to upgrade our Event Hub plan, which I'll show in just a moment. So what we'll do now is create a resource group. A resource group are the resources that an application needs to use to function. Things like a database, things like file storage, and yes, things like our Event Hub. The nice thing about our resource group is that it can be shared across different app services. So if you think about like a Tomcat instance, you could have multiple Tomcat instances share the same resource group. That's incredibly important when we're talking about Event Hub, because with Event Hub, we're typically tying together different applications. Think about microservices. Do one thing and do it well, but we can tie them together with this Event Hub concept. So we need to create a resource group if we haven't done so already add the event hub to that resource group. Then we also need to create an app service plan, which is where we say 
where what we're willing to pay for this, the level of service versus the SLAs versus the cost, so on and so forth. And then from that, we can finally define an app service, which is essentially where our application runs uh, according to the cost and the service level we've suggested here and the resources that it needs here. Then we deploy our application. It's able to use these assets. And then our user is able to use the application in their browser if it's a browser-based application. Once we log into Azure, creating a resource group is quite straightforward. We simply look for the resource group icon and choose Create. Now the subscription, naturally we need to pick our subscription. Most will be pay as you go unless you're on the trial period or have something else. Resource group, we need to give it a name. So we'll say my plant diary 01 Tomcat resources. Resource details, where do you want these resources to live? For me, US East makes the most sense. So I choose review and create. And we see it's really fairly straightforward. Create one more time. And there we go. Good resource group. Now within our resource group, we can create an event hub. For that, let's go back out to home and choose event hubs. Now we'll choose add. Note that once again, it asks for a subscription, but this time it asks, will also asks for a resource group. And you see, we can go to our My Plant Diary 01 Tomcat resources. Now, very important. We need to give it a namespace name, something unique. Think of a namespace in C Sharp or a package in Java. So I could say My Plant Diary 01. Location, naturally choose one that fits for you. For me, Central US is best. Now, pricing tier, be very careful here. Normally, I would go with basic, one consumer group and 100 brokered connections. However, there's a stipulation here where we need to go for the more premium product, the standard instead of the basic. And if you click on view pricing details, you can get an idea of uh, what we're looking at cost wise. The reason why we have to go with standard is standard includes the Kafka to Event Hub bridge, where basic does not. So if you're doing Kafka, yeah, definitely want standard. Uh, if you're not doing Kafka, basic will be fine. Now throughput units we can also configure. Each throughput unit represents 1000 messages per, per second or one megabyte of data per second. We're not nearly going to exceed that, so I'm going to keep it just at one. Now let's look at features. We have enable auto inflate, which I'll talk about first. You remember that in the previous screen, we kept that to one throughput unit. We can have that automatically scale up if needed up to 20 by enabling auto inflate. And it will tell us, it will kind of give us a max there of how many we can inflate to. I'm not going to need that for the simple application, but that would be ideal if you are a retailer and it's Black Friday or maybe the 22nd, 23rd of December, some very heavy shopping days, or if you're selling concert tickets and the concert's about to come up and you're opening the doors at 10 a.m., something like that. That's where that is handy. Availability zones allows you to spread this load across multiple geographies. Again, something we don't need for our simple project. Next, tags, any other tags? And then we can simply review and create. I've walked through a sample here. I already did create an event hub that I'm simply going to reuse, one with a very similar name. I simply called it My Plant Diary in Plant Diary 001 Resources. If I had hit Review and Create on that last screen, we would end up with something just like this, just slightly different names. Indeed, I can click on it and we can see several details that I have put together, uh, such as the host name, when it was created, the pricing tier, the throughput units, auto, inflate, so on and so forth. So in our next step, we're going to edit our project in IntelliJ IDEA to use this event hub. And for that, we need a connection string. So we'll just remember to come back here in a moment. Go to Settings and then Policy. And you'll see this connection string primary key. This is what we're going to need. So we'll leave this open. We'll come right back here in just a moment. I have the plant diary project I've been working on so far, and I'm going to make a new branch because I'm going to need to disable a lot of functionality at the moment. So we'll call this branch Azure Event Hub. The nice thing is that I can push this branch and then you can see all the changes that I'm doing. I'm going to pause the video for a moment and I'm going to undo a few things that are just additional functionality that we're not going to need just yet. This application writes to disk and it writes to a database and it writes to a queue. And I want to look at these one at a time. So I'm going to disable all of the code that writes to disk, reads from disk, 
writes to database and reads from database, and I'm just going to leave the stuff that interacts with the queue. And I should actually say topic or event hub, not queue. They're similar, but one subtle difference. A queue tends to be one publisher, one subscriber, where a topic or event hub could be one or multiple publishers and one or multiple subscribers, usually multiple. That'll let us clean up our application properties as well. And go ahead and take anything out that's related to the database and only leave the things that are related to Kafka. Now, these settings as they are won't work for us directly. We'll need to make some changes here and that's part of what we're, do, we're going to do. But first, let's make sure that this application is ready to be deployed on Azure. So for that, we go to the POM and let's confirm that we have packaging war. That looks good. Uh, Java version, that looks good. We could do 8 or 1.8 there. And then we also need the Spring Boot Starter Tomcat. Yep, we have that. Since we're running this on Azure, we're also going to need a Servlet Initializer class, which is a simple, small class. I'm just borrowing that from a different project. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here. I will post this up to GitHub so that you can use it directly as well. But you'll see that it's a simple class that just tells our application how to start. And with that, we're in pretty good shape. So now I can return to application.properties and make this more Azure friendly. The topic configuration, or as it will be soon, the event hub configuration is the part I'm highlighting here. The top four lines relate to something unrelated, so don't worry about those. Now, for our existing configuration, some of it will be fairly straightforward. First, the bootstrap servers. Go back to your event hub registration and take a look at the host name. Hit copy. That'll be a good start. So we'll replace this with that host name and then 9093. So it's typically whatever your namespace is dot service bus dot windows dot net colon 9093 my namespace is my plant diary yours will certainly be something different so just put your own namespace in there remember we created the namespace when we created the event hub initially once again for producer we're going to make the same change we're going to simply change the url and change that port now i've pasted in four lines that are specific to our event hub registration First of all, the Spring Kafka Bootstrap Servers. You notice it has the same value as the Spring Kafka Consumer Bootstrap Server and Producer Bootstrap Server. As a matter of fact, these are more than likely redundant, and I could probably take these away. I, I just didn't try it without those. I just went ahead and left all of them in, and it seems to work fine. Let me skip the Spring Kafka Properties Sassel JAAS config. That one's the most confusing. The others are very straightforward. Spring Kafka Properties, SASL Mechanism equals plain. Spring Kafka Properties, Security Protocol equals SASL SSL. Okay, before we get to the SASL JAAS config, one thing I want to mention is that you notice this is a properties file, not a YAML file. So in YAML, it tends to use tabs a lot more to do groupings, which is a nice way to put your stuff together. Also, YAML tends to use a colon instead of an equal sign. So just a note, if you're putting this in a YAML file, make sure you're using proper YAML syntax. That is a colon instead of equals. On the other hand, if you're copying from a YAML file to a properties file, make sure you're using property syntax. When I was working through this demonstration, I accidentally had a couple of these left at colons, and it took a long, long time to figure out why things weren't running. Okay, finally, this Spring Kafka Properties SASL JAS config. This was probably the most confusing thing to set up because the examples online are kind of like, well, it should be your connection string, it should be your username, and it was really hard to tell what they were. Here's the secret. Go back out to your event hub, and remember when I told you about the time we're going to need to look at shared access policies? Go there, choose this or create a new one if you want, and then copy this connection string primary key that appears. Boom, like so, just hit copy. Now, SASL JAAS config. Everything that I'm highlighting here, keep it exactly as I have it. And that means where you have username equals quote dollar sign connection string close quote, leave that exactly as it is. When I first saw this in an online tutorial, I thought I had to put a connection string in there. Once again, I tried probably eight to 10 different permutations before I realized, oh no, you're just supposed to leave it as quote dollar sign connection string close quote. 
Now, the tricky part is the password. So we have password equals. And then in quotes, we want to put that thing that I just copied. Now, because this is related to how we're charged, I've obfuscated my actual shared access key for this video, but this is what that property should look like. It should be password equals and then double quote and then start with endpoint all the way down to the shared access key. And once again, that's what we just copied from that event hub registry. So paste that in there. Be very careful again, because a lot of the examples have something like your key here and it's tempting to leave those curlies. Don't leave those curlies. It should be exactly what you just copied. Uh, just paste that in quotes, terminate with a semicolon, and you should be in good shape. In the real application, I have it sending to a Kafka template when we save a photo. I'm not going to worry about photos in this application because we know we just want to put things on a topic. We don't want to worry about file storage, database, or anything else like that. So I am simply going to borrow that line, and I'm going to paste it up here in my specimen DAO, and I'm going to do a bit of Kafka configuration up here. So you can see what I did is I created a Kafka template attribute, put the auto wired annotation on it so Spring will give it to us. And then in the save method, I simply said Kafka template.sin. And I gave it a topic, which is photo in. That'll essentially be an event or an event hub in Azure. And then what am I putting on that? I'm putting on that the description of the specimen. In other words, what the user enters in this field right here is what I'll put on the topic. I had traditionally put in the file path to an image that the user had uploaded so the photo processor could grab it. But remember, we're just worried about proof of concept now by using event hubs to communicate across applications. So by putting that specimen description, it's something that's easy for me to change just by changing the value in that web form. And then we can do some conditional logic based on that. Once we're comfortable with our changes, we can go ahead and deploy. So I right click and I go to Azure and then deploy to Azure Web Apps. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting. You see, I can deploy to an existing web app like My Plant Diary 01, My Plant Diary 02, or I can make a new one. Now for making a new one, let's be very careful here and absolutely positively click more settings. That's going to be very important. What you see here is the same thing that you could configure in the Azure portal. We just have it here locally in IntelliJ IDEA to make life a little bit easier on us. Now, important note, resource group, ultra important. Remember that a resource group can be shared across applications, so we definitely don't want to create a new one. We want to use this Plant Diary 001 Tomcat resources because that contains our event hub. Now for name, I can just come up with any kind of name. I can say plantdiary.azurewebsites.net. For platform, I can do Linux Java 8 or Linux Java 11. I did see some documentation that said that you should run Java 8 with Event Hub and Kafka. I've compiled to Java 8, but I found that running it with Java 11 Tomcat has worked for me okay. Region, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Plan. Plan, this is where we're going to determine what we're paying for. So you see this one says basic B2. Careful there, that comes with a cost. If you want to create a new plan and you don't want it to have a cost, then we can give it a name here. Uh, I'll just say something like that, doesn't matter. And then here we can say free F1. So that's how you keep it free, but keep in mind that you get what you pay for. A free website is not something that's going to be very durable. I found they restart frequently and require some maintenance where basic or something paid is going to have a bit more uptime. As luck would have it, I've already created a plan for this configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and use this plan and then choose OK. Now I simply confirm what I have. One important thing here is deploy to root. Deploy to root means that you can simply go to whatever your app name is .azurewebsites.net and it will pull up your application from there. If you unclick deploy to root, it will deploy it in a subdirectory, essentially an application on Tomcat. And then you'll need to go to your app name .azurewebsites.net slash your application name. I'm going to go ahead and keep this one on deploy to root and I'm going to choose run. This will take a while. So in lieu of recording and speeding up the video, I'm simply going to pause the video periodically. Uh, it can take a good five, 10 minutes for it to deploy from here, and then a good five minutes or so for it to restart once it reaches Azure. 
at this point, it's built the application locally, and now it's creating that new application service on Azure. So you see creating new web apps, stopping web app. Next, it's going to deploy the application, hopefully, and start the application. I just got deploy succeeded, and then it automatically redirects me to the web app. This is common. As it's deploying, it has to start and restart our application server Tomcat. And so oftentimes you'll see a 403 immediately, but if you hit refresh, you'll see that it will take a while to load. And that's usually a good sign because it is starting Tomcat as we speak and deploying our application. And our application has deployed. Let's say a nice tree with fall color is the description and then choose submit. I often find the first time I submit, it takes just a moment to recognize the event hub and the like. So the first time a bit of a slow response, but thereafter it's a lot faster. Now here's the real test. Is our dashboard going to be updated with that new fall color entry that we just added to our event hub? I hit refresh and sure enough, you see a nice tree with fall color. So in this video, we've seen how to take an existing application, which is our plant diary application, and have that connected to an event hub. I had already connected this dashboard to an event hub so that we could see that communication between apps. So we've just configured and deployed our plant diary microservice application to run on Azure with event hub and write events to the event hub called photo in. I had previously set up this dashboard application to read those events off of photo in. But guess what? In the next video, I'm going to show how to deploy all three of these simultaneously and watch the interaction as Plant Diary writes to this Photo One Event Hub, and then Photo Processor reads from it, and then it also writes to two others, and then Dashboard reads from it as well. So in this video, we've seen how to configure an application to write to an Event Hub. In the next video, we'll see how to deploy all three applications, and all three of them have different interactions. This is write-only, Dashboard is read-only, Photo processor is read and write. So it gets pretty neat as we can turn on an application, turn off an application, and we can watch what's happening to our event hub. As always, I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.